Well, Florida lost to Arkansas in overtime on Saturday in the Swamp, 39-36. to Billy Napier said in his postgame press conference that there is a lot of blame to go around. I mean, I guess in theory that's true, but I think the head coach gets the very most. We've seen this movie before. It's not even the fact that Florida lost, even though there is zero reason for Florida to lose to a 2-6 and six Arkansas team at home. It's the way Florida continues to lose. It's maddening. It's frustrating. We are an operational mess. A game day operational mess. You know who takes the blame for that? The CEO. It is so maddening to watch week after week the same sort of procedural mistakes, the same sort of chaos on the sidelines that we have been watching all season from a coach who preaches organization, attention to details, statistics. That is not what we are seeing on game day on Saturday. Operations is Florida's biggest problem. Their second problem is that their talent level wasn't there when Napier took over, right? Dan Mullen hadn't recruited. We didn't have great talent on that roster. But do you know what happened since Billy Napier took over? The talent has started to improve. Now we're in a spot where we really do have a lot of talented players on this team. They're just young and inexperienced. So the talent portion of this is getting fixed. The biggest problem, though, is how do we fix the operational mess that is Florida's sidelines on Saturday? Another area that we really need to be paying attention to is effort. I am not saying that Florida's players don't want to win. They do want to win. I am not saying that they are quitting because they aren't. These guys were still playing hard all the way through this entire game. When Florida went down 14 nothing three minutes into this game, this team could have quit. We could have seen it on their faces. We didn't. But not quitting on your head coach, not quitting on your teammate is different than giving relentless effort for 46 seconds on every play, every single play. And that is not happening on Saturday. But you know what? Effort can be coached. We need to see it from our coaches on the sidelines. We need to see them up in players' faces, chewing them out, benching them if they aren't giving relentless effort. And I got news. A lot of them aren't. Florida is hurting Florida by a lot of the decisions that they are making as a staff on the sidelines on Saturday. It's like a little bit about play calling. That third down play when Mertz was hurt, You might as well have punted on third down there. You gave up the possession. The play call said, I don't care. I'm giving up. We can't be successful here. I'm just going to punt the ball, essentially. And listen, do something. Even if you don't give it, have some sort of effort. Make a good play call. They just didn't. I want to talk a lot about special teams. And guys, I know that we talk about special teams on this channel a lot. And I know that it's only one third of the piece of the puzzle. But I think Florida's special teams blunders on Saturday are a really good microcosm of what is wrong with this team overall operationally. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what is supposed to happen on the sidelines at the end, like what happened on the end of the game in regulation. So, What is supposed to happen is that your head coach or your offensive play caller, which in our case is the same person, is supposed to make a spike call. Generally, it's called clock. So your head coach is on the headset and he is telling anybody else with the headset, which should also be your special teams coach, hey, I'm calling clock here. Clock is what we're doing, okay? If he wanted a hurry up field goal, that's going to be called mayday. The only time that your special teams unit should hustle on the field like we saw start to happen on Saturday is if mayday is called. The mayday call comes from the head coach or the offensive coordinator. It is called into the special teams coach. 
the special teams coach relays that to the field goal unit. So what happened on Saturday? Where was the breakdown in the chain of events? Was Napier so caught up in the moment that he didn't call clock or mayday? Clock is what was supposed to be called there. If that's the case and the special teams coach is like, man, this is getting kind of close. I haven't heard anything. You know what he's supposed to do? He's supposed to get on the headset and say, coach, is it clock or is it mayday? And then your offensive coordinator or your head coach answers. None of this happened. I don't know where Napier's communication is going. Who is wearing the headset that is supposed to be relaying to special teams? And is the communication between the two even happening at all? Judging by what we've seen repeatedly this year, it's not. Napier said in his press conference that a player incorrectly thought he heard Florida's order to run on the field goal team and then all of his teammates just followed him. There should be a coach there. It's never should be a scenario where a player thinks he hears something, so then he runs out on his own. A coach should be standing in front of them, corralling them, looking them in the face, and telling them exactly what their next move is. Look at Florida's sideline. That is not happening. We also ran 10 out on a field goal earlier in the game, an Arkansas field goal. Let me tell you what's supposed to happen with that. Generally, there is a coach, not your special teams coach. A lot of times it's an assistant strength coach, somebody else on the staff who sits with the special teams unit as a whole. Let's say it's second down and it's not looking great. That coach is supposed to say, all right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight guys right in front of me here for punt. I know my punter's in the net. That makes nine. I know there's two guys currently on the field that are going to play on this special teams unit. Okay, I've got my 11 guys. Guys, punt is coming up. Punt team is about to go up. That communication is going on. If that coach says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, He's like, oh, shoot, there's only seven guys here. I know there's two playing. I know my punter's in the net. I'm down a guy. He's supposed to look at his roster and say, oh, so-and-so's hurt. Okay, back up, blah, blah, blah. You're that next person that's in this unit. That is where the counting happens. That's not happening. Who is that coach? Who is the coach that's supposed to be telling those units when they get on the field? This is an operational mess. And it really upsets me when Napier stands there and says that it has anything to do with the players because it does not. This is not the player's job. This is a coach's job. Because of the chaos that happened with the field goal team running on the field, it was a a legal substitution. It added five yards to a field goal. Smack missed a 44-yard field goal. It would have been 39 had there not been that five-yard illegal substitution penalty. Guess what? College accuracy based on yardage, the stats for this year, for a 35 to a 39-yard field goal, you have a 71.1% chance of making it. You bump that to a field goal between 40 and 44 yards, you have a 62.6% chance of making it. So by adding that five-yard penalty, you reduce your chances of making it by about roughly 8%. You know what? You want to talk about statistics? You want to say what the analytics say? The analytics say pay attention to special teams and it's going to give you a better chance of winning the game. It's craziness and it's frustrating and it's fixable, but you have to recognize that it's a problem to be able to fix it. Let's talk a little bit about defense. Arkansas had a new offensive coordinator who had never called a play before Saturday. Kenny Guyton was a wide receiver under Urban Meyer at Ohio State. He's 32 years old. Can you imagine him sitting there like, hmm, what should we run? What should we run? Let's run a QB draw. Okay, that worked. All right, what are we going to go with next? I don't know. QB draw? Wow, that worked again. Maybe we should try another QB draw. The Razorbacks scored more points in three minutes than they had scored in the five previous quarters combined. They had a season high 481 yards, which is actually 31 more yards than they had gotten in their last two games added together. 
That's crazy. We did actually win the turnover battle, which is nice to see and a step in the right direction. We also had five sacks, so I like the improved pressure there. The problem is when the quarterback was actually running the ball, we couldn't tackle him. So the pressure didn't really help. I just, it is so frustrating to watch this defense right now. They can't tackle. We didn't make adjustments. Why was there not a spy on the quarterback? These are in-game adjustments that we're not seeing Austin Armstrong make. I do think that Austin Armstrong will continue to improve. I think he's got his players bought in. I just think this defense still has a long way to go. And part of that is really young talent that is currently gaining experience. KJ Jefferson was 20 for 31, 255 yards and 92 yards rushing on 17 attempts. But also keep in mind that obviously those sacks count against his rushing yards. So the stats were really much worse than that. This was tough. It was a tough game to watch. Florida's offense honestly looked pretty darn good. If you can score 36 points, you should be able to win the game. This should not be on the offense, right? This is squarely on the defense and special teams. But honestly, moreover, big picture, it's on the operational mess that is happening on Saturdays for the Florida Gators. It seems like Billy Napier is an incredible coach Sunday through Friday. He recruits incredibly well. He keeps his players out of trouble. He says all of the right things. People like to work for him. He is a nice guy. He is not a great game day coach, at least not wearing all of the hats that he's currently getting. We've been beating this drum since week one, but Florida needs an offensive coordinator and not just an offensive coordinator that's going to be a Billy Dubois. It can't be someone that they just promote from within. They've got to go out, get a seasoned veteran who has a great resume to show who's going to come in, change the system, score some points and make good game day decisions. Then we need a special teams coach who is a designated on the field special teams coach. Don't give me an analyst that's going to be standing 50 yards away from where the field goal unit is at its most crucial time. Give me a real, real special teams coach. But the silver lining to what we saw on Saturday, which I know was incredibly frustrated. If you can't tell, I'm a little frustrated too. Talent and experience is getting fixed. More talent is on the way. Napier is a bang up recruiter. Our 2024 class is so good and they're still not done recruiting. The talented young guys that he has already brought in are getting reps quickly. They are improving, but the operational side needs to get fixed. Every single week, it's something different. And the press conferences where you stand around and you're asked about special teams and you're like, oh, I don't know, which part? I thought we were pretty good at blah, 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 and blah, 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 is so maddening to the fans. I want a Billy Napier that stands up there that says, you're right, we suck at special teams. I'm going back to the drawing board because there's got to be somebody here who can help me get this right. Instead of, acting like it's a silly question. You don't get to bristle at questions about a unit who essentially has been garbage all season long. And I think, you know, I, I, some of you guys commented to me on Twitter, when I say special teams, I'm almost never talking about the field goal kicker or the punter. They are two pieces of a very large puzzle. And even when field goals are missed, a lot of the times they're missed because of something that happened well before his foot hit the ball. In this case, it may have been the absolute pandemonium that was happening right before that ball was snapped. So I'm not blaming Trey Smack. I'm not blaming Jeremy Crawshaw. I'm, I am saying as a whole, there needs to be a coach, a grown-up, an adult fully in charge of special teams. It can't be an afterthought. It can't be, oh, the linebackers are going to coach these three. Offensive line coaches are going to coach those four. Kickers and punters, you're kind of left to your own devices because you're weird and we don't really know how to coach you. It has to be a special teams coach that is fully in charge of this unit and knows what the hell they are doing. You want help finding one? I can help you do that.
Now you have three incredibly tough games left. Much better offenses than we saw yesterday. At least two of those teams have a much better defense than we've seen. Guys, this is gut check time. We told you how important yesterday's game was because UF might actually be a double-digit dog in all three of these games to finish the season. Bowl eligibility at this point is a long shot. Five and four could very quickly become five and seven, and Billy Napier cannot let that happen. He's not getting fired this year either way, and I am in no way suggesting that. But if UF goes into next year with two straight losing seasons, he is going to need to really turn it around against one of the toughest schedules that college football has ever seen. Figuring out a way to get at least one of the next three would be massive for Billy Napier. But it is a long shot. So like I said, gut check time in Gainesville. Really interested to see what goes on this week Are there any sort of internal changes made? Is there a fire lit? I need to see it, and we need to see it quickly. But no matter what, no matter the score on the field, no matter the record, in all kinds of weather, it's always go Gators.